As we celebrate NCAA Division III week in these unprecedented times, NJCU Athletics brings you a Zoom chat featuring staff and coaches who have all played and now work at the Division III level. Welcome, I'm Ira Thor, Assistant Director of Athletics for Strategic Communications, and we will introduce our panel from the top left square to our bottom square. Justin Beaumont, head women's volleyball coach and associate men's volleyball coach. To my right, Nick Cesare, associate head baseball coach. On the top right, Pete Vincent, the assistant director of the Rising Night Institute. Second row, Joe Cullen, head men's soccer coach. Next to him is Jerry Smith, head baseball coach. Then comes Danielle Bean, the associate director of athletics for student development and the director of the Rising Night Institute. And Carlo Edra, head men's volleyball coach. Third row, we have Pat Devaney, head women's basketball coach. Joe Yek, head men's and women's golf coach. Anthony Tuesta, head women's soccer coach. Hall of Famer Jeffrey L. Jordan, Associate Director of Athletics for Internal Operations. And last but not least, newest member of our staff, Navani Brown, who's our equipment supervisor and the coordinator of community outreach and community rec. So welcome everyone. Thanks for being part of the unique setup. We're doing this via Zoom as we are all in the midst right now of the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic and haven't seen any of you guys in person in about a month. The first question, um, we're gonna talk about our Division Three athletic paths. Where, tell us where you competed and why you chose to play Division Three at the institution where you competed and a little bit about your journey. Uh, we'll start with uh, our newest Hall of Famer, Jeffrey L. Jordan. Good morning and uh, thank you for allowing me to participate in this round table discussion. Uh, my journey uh, to Jersey City State College back in 1987, uh, which of course now is New Jersey City University, uh, was not my, my first stop as a, as a high school student. Um, I was recruited by a number of Division I schools, uh, Columbia, William & Mary, University of Massachusetts, but my dream was actually to pay, play for Indiana University and Bob Knight, if that makes any kind of sense at all to, to those in the know. Um, I was also at Indiana State, and uh, my senior year in high school, I actually fell in love with New York City. I fell in love with the street life um, in a positive way um, and wanted to stay home, so I ended up going to St. John's University Division I. They just came off of Final Four, and I was uh, determined to end up or, or try to end up like uh, the movie Rudy uh, as a walk-on, and uh, it was actually working out pretty well until about two weeks before preseason, I got the invite to, to come try out from the, the trials and I broke my kneecap and that was it for a five foot six point guard, um, having a guard six foot five point guard. So my speed was gone, fell into a depression and I ended up coming to an open gym uh, at this school called Jersey City State University and kind of opened my eyes into all of the options that I didn't explore. And Jersey City State was actually coincidentally coming off of a final four of their own in Division Three, And I, I knew that I fit right in. Fell in love with the coach and um, started my career. I still had um, four years of, of playing, you know, with NCAA regulations. And it worked out extremely well. But I think the, the main point that I can share with this group today is that I wasn't exposed to available the smaller schools across the country Division two, Division three, and it was. Uh, I'm so blessed that my my path took me here, because uh, it just opened me up to everything that was possible in the metropolitan area, and um, I just fell in love with everything that the school was about. So I'm really happy that I ended up being a Division three player, and um, as you mentioned, it, it culminated in a, a Hall of Fame induction. So very very happy with the path that I took. Nick Cesare, you're the only member of our panel who's got a national championship <coughs> ring on their finger. Tell yep. us about your experience as a Division Three athlete. Um, as an experience, all right. So uh, coming out of high school, I was recruited by mostly New Jersey schools. 
um, Division two, Division three, not really any D ones. Um, so going, taking my visits everywhere. Um, I went to Kane, by the way. Um, so taking my visits, they all were kind of the same at the other schools. Kane's was a little different. Um, I had had a um, previous you know, relationship with some of the coaching staff. Um, one of their coaches is from my town. Um, he was friends with um, a friend of mine's older sister. So like I had known him when he was in high school, middle school, and we would go watch them play. So we had that existing relationship. Um, that definitely helped a lot. Um, but just when the decision to where am I going to go to school for the next couple of years came down to it, um, Kane had was having a good season in 2004 and 2005. <clears throat> um, and that was the thing that I was most drawn to was, was the, the record, the, the success and wanting to be a part of that, wanting to be on a winning team. Um, the other thing that drew me in was my other um, basically top choice was um, tra um transitioning from division two to division one the year I would I would have came in so four years of that transition and having no chance of playing in an NCAA tournament had no um it wasn't something I wanted to do I wanted to play in an NCAA tournament and have a chance to you know win a national championship and we ended up being able to do so but just the experience of being in you know, five NCAA tournaments, playing in four regional championships, winning three of them, being in three College World Series. Um, that was what I was looking for. I, was, I wanted to have team success um, and, and be able to experience all the things that we were able to, um, traveling <clears throat> where we were, where we went to go play in these NCAA tournaments and the College World Series and things like that. And that was what I was looking for. And, and I wouldn't, have traded you know looking back at it I wouldn't have changed anything that I did of course Nick won a national title as part of Kane's 2007 baseball team we'll transition from somebody who won a national championship to somebody who almost won a national championship in a sport that he actually does not coach and that will be Joe Yak Joe our head men's and women's golf coach but your experience you chose York College in Pennsylvania you had a very different experience because you were a two-sport athlete. Yeah, so going into my uh, senior year in high school, I actually <clears throat> played baseball as well. Um, in, in Pennsylvania, balls, or golf is a fall sport. So um, heading into my senior year, I actually wasn't really sh sure if I wanted to go baseball or basketball. Um, I knew I was a Division three athlete in all three of those sports. So um, basketball was always my first love. So, you know, sometime probably halfway through, Senior year, I realized I definitely wanted to play basketball. Um, also realized playing baseball and basketball is probably going to be pretty difficult because um, of the overlap. I knew golf. Um, I could probably make it work because it was a little bit more of an individualized sport, um, and a lot of the teams would practice on their own anyway. So um, I was looking at schools mostly four or five-hour radius. Um, kind of wanted to go a little further away from home, but I actually ended up choosing a place I was about an hour away. Um, Looked at schools like Albright, uh, Washington Jefferson, Washington College in Maryland. Um, at the beginning of the process, I also looked at some schools uh, a little bit bigger, like George Mason, Temple, uh, which is my alma mater for my father. Um, was thinking about maybe just going to school there and not playing a sport or even potentially walking on on the baseball team. I realized that was a little bit unrealistic, um, so I wanted to go the basketball route. Um, they had sport management, business major stuff I was looking for. I also want to do something that was affordable uh, for my parents. Um, so your I was a, a good fit. I was able to you know play closer to home, which I think my parents were pretty excited about. So ha having the opportunity to play both sports, uh, basketball and golf was an awesome experience. Actually, my college coach was the coach for both sports, so it made the transition fall, winter, spring much easier. Um, and it was awesome. I mean, my freshman year, we actually, I think we're a game under 500. And then uh, sophomore year, had a couple transfers. We had a D2 transfer. We had a couple kids come back close to home. Um, and we had a couple key returners. And I think we ended up going 28-4 and four that year. Made it to the Final Four. So it was a pretty cool experience. Um, 
And then our junior year, we had a lot of high expectations. We pretty much had everyone back and then lost in the second, you know, the second round of the NCAA tournament. But um, it was an awesome experience. I am still close friends with a lot of my teammates uh, to this day. So having the opportunity to play uh, two sports in, in college was awesome. Carlo Adra, you coming out of high school didn't know if you were going to be playing uh, collegiate volleyball, but then you found the NJCU or NJCU found you. Tell us about your experience. Uh, yeah, at, out of high school, I was one of those kids that had no idea where I wanted to go to school or what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, I was going to community college and I was, I guess I had no, no real future in sight. And uh, I ended up playing in an open gym where uh, Coach Feliciano, who uh, recruited me during that time, to, saw me, and I, I personally didn't think I was good enough to play collegiately, and uh, took me in, which was funny because I was, I grew up in Jersey City, and I've been there since I was maybe four or five years old, and uh, we moved out of there, moved to Edison, New Jersey, and my parents, when I first brought it up to them, they're like, so, so you're going back to Jersey City, and I was like, I I guess because I, I like I said I had no I had nothing planned for my future so I ended up trusting trusting the coach uh, came to NJCU had uh, possibly the greatest years of my life there uh, my freshman year we were kind of cocky there were about five of us that came in we called ourselves the Fab Five and uh, we thought we were we thought we were you know gonna gonna take this country by storm and in reality we we got our behinds whooped for a full season. And then we all came back the next year, kept up with some, some really good teams, but couldn't pull those wins out. And then my uh, third year, which uh, I only had three years of eligibility. So uh, the biggest reason for our, my, my last year playing was we were all together for, for three straight years. And uh, we were one of the top 15 teams in the country. And NJCU Volleyball has not hit that level since, uh, since 2006. Uh, yeah, some of those guys are still my best friends to this day. And, uh, yeah, coming to school, playing D3 just gave me so many gifts. Uh, I also figured out what I wanted to do with my life there. So, yeah, it was a great experience for me, and I'm um, glad I went, I went to D3. Pete Vincent, you played in one of the better high school program systems in the state at St. Anthony and then competed at a, a smaller <coughs> school in the NCAA. So you tell us about – your your journey well my situation is kind of like joe's a little bit in the sense that like you know my senior year the last sport you play is, is baseball and i had a pretty good baseball season my senior year and, and i was looking kind of to do both in college and you know very fully aware that you know it's very difficult to go to any other level besides maybe division three to play both sports um and I, I, I really had two choices. Um, you know, I, I was looking at different schools like Penn State, Altoona, you know, um, St. Peter's College. It, it really just came down to me to St. Peter's College or Centenary University, which is where I ended up. Um, and the choice I had at St. Peter's was I was going to go in there and be <clears throat> the men's basketball team team manager. Um, and they were going to kind of like groom me to be team manager, student assistant, GA, and who knows where I would have went if I went on that path. Uh, and then like that day I went home and, and on the ride home, I was telling my parents like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Like, this is gonna be awesome. Um, and at the time, like they were, gonna, St. Peter's, you know, the, the next four years, they were very good. They had a player by the name of Keidre Clark who came in and I knew he was going there. And I was like, this is gonna be awesome. Like, there's gonna be big things at St. Peter's College. And the day I got home, I got a letter in the mail from Centenary just giving me an extra X amount of money uh, in scholarship money to go there. And I was like, oh, it's a no brainer now. Um, so, um, you know, I made the trek to Hackettstown, New Jersey, the, the hour drive from Jersey City to Hackettstown. Uh, and I absolutely loved it. I loved my experience there. Uh, I had some great college basketball teammates. Um, I tried to do the baseball thing. The first practice I went to was like at 5 a.m. And I was like, what is this about? Like, uh, there's no 5 a.m. in a basketball. So um, I, it just it just wasn't for me. Uh, it, it was higher, way higher level than I thought. Um, and, um, you know, we at Center, there was amazing baseball teams. Um, they won, you know, their conference two years in a row when I was there. But I, I truly enjoyed and loved uh, every moment of playing basketball there. Um, actually redshirted my freshman year because the coach brought in uh, like five guards 
And he was just like, just work on your game, get better. And, and I did all season. Uh, so he said, listen, I'm actually going to keep you on as a student assistant coach. It was so crazy because I'm a freshman in college. And then there's guys that are juniors and seniors. There's guys that are 23, 24 years old uh, on the team. And, and I'm running the drill. And they're looking at me, this you know 19-year-old kid. And I'm running the drill in practice. And they, they, I appreciated them because they showed me the same level of respect as, as the coaches. And no one ever said, like, who, who is this guy, you know? Um, so I did that for a year, and then I, I played three years after that. And it was it was an amazing experience. I mean, we weren't some of the best teams in the country. But I got a chance to play with uh, Kane Fitzgerald, who's an NBA referee now. Uh, he refereed the NBA Finals last year, and, you know, he's been an NBA ref for a decade now. Um, and, and some other amazing players uh, that are, to this day, you know, some of my best friends that we, we talk literally every day. So, um, you know, and, and I was able to work you know, have a job in the off season, you know, if I, if I wanted to, you know, I joined the frat my freshman year. So I was able to do that stuff, uh, you know, division three athletics, you know, uh, awarded me the opportunity to do many other things in my life other than just play basketball. Joe Cullen, you are part of the reason why NJSU did not win the NJAC championship in 2007. Tell us about your experience as a hall of fame athlete with the Montclair State Redhawks? So coming out of high school, um, I applied to probably 10, 12 different schools. Um, I would say half of them were Division One, and then the other half were Division Three. Uh, being 18, everyone tells you Division One, Division One, Division One. And the optics of that, like, and the ego side of everything, everyone thinks that's what you have to do. And probably when I was 17, 18, I probably kind of thought the same thing. Um, Turns out, uh, Montclair winds up being the best situation for me as a student athlete. Financially, uh, athletically, academically, it was just the, the perfect fit. Um, and it wasn't the original plan. Um, there were some other bigger places where I thought I was going to wind up, but I got there um, from day one. Uh, I was able to contribute in a situation that was Highly competitive, extremely challenging, but everyone had opportunities there. And we, in four years, got to play in uh, four conference championships, uh, four NCAA tournaments, win four conference championships, uh, go to Sweet 16s, Elite Eights, uh, a lot of things that a lot of people don't get to do. Um, so my experience was top notch. Uh, the people there I'm still friends with today. I'll be friends with till the day I die. It, it was the perfect experience for me. It kind of pushed me down the path that I'm on right now. I wouldn't be coaching college soccer if I went, I don't think, anywhere else. Um, so it was the right call for me um, without like trying to uh, be forced into a situation um, playing Division One, or, or maybe not the perfect fit for me, but this wound up really being the right fit. And over four years, you can't ask for a better experience than what I was given. Um, and I got to leave and uh, leave my footprint a little bit. And on a program that was good then, and has continued to be good, and probably will be for I mean, as long as they're going to keep doing what they're doing. So my experience was great. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better one. And you got to do it the entire time with your twin brother, which is something you may not have been able to do at a higher level school. Of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got to play, I don't know, nearly a hundred soccer games in, in my career there. And almost every one was with my twin brother uh, who got to do the same thing. Uh, a couple of years later, my younger brother went and played there. So the school was the right fit for me, my brother, my younger brother, my family. Uh, we got to contribute and, and and add a little bit to the program along the way. So it, it was right for me. Justin Beaumont will go with you next as uh, you played here at the school that you now coach at. Tell us about your experience as a men's volleyball player here at NJCU. Uh, so my, my experience is similar to um, JJ's um, in the sense that I, I, um, I kind of stumbled upon NJCU um, Carlo 
Edra, who spoke previously, was my coach um, and recruited me. Um, and I, I uh, for the most part, just, just fell right into the situation. Um, I was recruited as, as a, a different position to play at NGCU. Um, and when I got there, um, Carlos said, you know, you're going to be this position. And I was kind of uh, against that. <laughs> I, was, I was upset about it. Um, but then Carlo looked at me and said, well, you can, you can be on the court or you can be on the bench. Which one do you want to do? And I was like, I'll be whatever position you need, coach. Um, and so my, my situation is, um, is unique in the sense that um, I, I, I'm 5'6", like JJ mentioned. Um, as for volleyball players, that's kind of, um, I, I guess for, for most sports, that's kind of small. And, um, but I was, I was blessed with uh, a, a really good jumping ability. So it allowed me to play at a high level. I still play volleyball. Um, and I actually started coaching and volunteering when I was still a student athlete at the division three level. Um, I was, I was always interested in the X's and O's of the game, um, a film junkie and someone who took every single mistake very seriously and thought about it sometimes too much. Um, and, and that, that allowed me to become, um, a, a volleyball coach even way before my time. I think I was, I was probably coaching kids when I was 15 or 16 years old, which is as coaches, we don't want our kids to do that. Um, but I was already doing that. I was already giving, um, soft criticisms and critiques to my teammates as a 16, 17 year old, uh, for club. And what I found was that they embraced it. Um, so at NGCU it was very similar. I was a player coach the whole time I was there. Um, which at times was, was a conflict. Um, uh, coach Bobby Cole, actually, he's our compliance officer now. Believe it or not, he was my coach at one point at NGCU. And uh, he and I butted heads because I, I, you know, I thought I knew more volleyball than him. And, and um, I, I've always thought that about uh, a lot of my teammates. So I've tried to help him in that sense. Um, I've also coached every division. Uh, I don't know if I'm one of the unique uh, people on this panel that's coached division one, two, and three at this point. I've coached all three. Um, so coming from a division three background as a player, I can tell you at the division one and division two levels, it's so much more, um, like Pete, um, hinted at, it's so much more demanding on your time. It's so much more difficult to do things that you want to. Um, and division three allowed me to, to have a good time and experience life. I also was, um, was working full time while I was a student athlete so that I could help my mom pay for the bills. Um, so staying close to home was, was necessary for me. Um, so again, I, I fell into the NGCU lap pretty naturally. Um, I did have other, other options. I went on a few other visits, um, but all of those places wanted me to be uh, what's called a libero, the, the position that doesn't attack. And uh, I didn't like that very much. So um, yeah, division three volleyball was, was a, uh, was a saving grace for me. I think I probably would have been in a lot of trouble if I didn't play uh, volleyball in college and, and, you know, go to school. So I got really lucky. So Bonnie Brown, you're our most recent student athlete on this panel. Tell us about your experience and what led you to play at NJCU. Uh, so for me, I played uh, high school soccer at North Tech. And uh, when I first came here to America from uh, Jamaica, which is where I immigrated from, uh, my number one goal was to go to college for free. And uh, I was visited by the then coach um, to take me on a recruit uh, visit here to NJCU. And uh, I fell in love with the atmosphere. It was similar. It was what I was used to. It was the diversity. And it was close to home. It would be ex extremely affordable because I was uh, able to get a full academic scholarship to go there as well. And uh, that was really my deciding factor in coming to NJCU. Now, as I got there and sorry to get um, an idea of what college was all about. Um, that's when I kind of started to realize, you know, what it took to be a college athlete at the division three level, that it was much more than just playing sports. It was all about being able to balance a life of sports and having a job and um, being able to take care of stuff in class as well. Uh, so it took me a little while to kind of warm up to that. But once I did and got that opportunity to, um, I made the most of it. And uh, for me, it gave me an opportunity to really uh, decide what I wanted to do with life. And I knew that I wanted to continue to be a part of the college experience because for me, NJCU shaped and molded the person I am today. 
um, I wanted to be able to influence others and uh, be a part of that as well. And uh, that's why I decided to continue my uh, career in college academics. So um, for me, I think uh, being a part of Division Three really shaped who I am today and gave me the opportunity to uh, be where I am when it comes to working and being a part of the college experience. Jerry Smith, another baseball student athlete from Kane uh, with the Cougar pedigree. Tell us about uh, what led you to compete at that level um, here at a and Jack sister school. Well, I had a little bit of a different experience in the sense that I had two older siblings that went through the process earlier. I had a father who was a high school coach who um, communicated with some of the college coaches prior with some of his previous athletes. So I took all that experience prior and um, put it all together. So I sat down with my family, like uh, Coach Cullen said, you want a fit that's financially, athletically, academically, and socially. So when we had that sit down and we talked, um, I was recruited by four schools, two of which were private schools, two were public. Um, the private schools, again, when you talk financially, it was better fit for my family to, to go with the public schools. So we're down to two in that sense. And then socially, I knew a player on Kane before, um, a family friend, still a friend today. I got to play with him for about two or three years in the program. He sat down with me. He talked, um, talked about how the program was building, where it was going. Um, around 1995, Kane was really starting to build something there. They recently got a new assistant coach. I came in a couple years after, so we knew it was on the rise. And it was an additional bonus that I got to play for a lot of good coaches um, in the sense that Coach Ivero is still there currently today. He's a Hall of Famer, um, obviously my father in high school. And our assistant coach at the time at Kane is currently the head coach at St. Thomas in Miami. So all throughout my career, I knew I wanted to be a coach because that's what my father did. And I got to see that. And it was an added bonus to play for, like I said, about three um, coaches that really developed me into the direction and the career I wanted to go. Couple that with academically, I knew I wanted to go the teacher route. Kane was a, a good school for, for teachers at the time. Um, financially, academically, it, it really just fit nice. And um, by our second year, we made the NCAA um, playoffs. And again, Kane has since taken off since there. So Again, right fit for me, my family, and uh, I'm very glad I went there. Anthony Tuest, uh, I want to end the Kane uh, people on the call. So you are our third Kane individual, former NJAC Player of the Year in men's soccer. Tell us about uh, your experience also playing for the Cougars. Uh, well, first, before I went to King, I went to Mercer, to a community college. Uh, we call Charlie Mercer. Um, it's funny because after Mercer, uh, I went for two years. Uh, I couldn't go nowhere because I was waiting for my, uh, my green card, my resident. So what I did was just uh, working for two years. Just working, try to, you know, try to uh, support my family, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, so after two years and that year, I got my, you know, finally I received my, uh, my resident green card. So I was like, all right, you know, it's time for me to, to go away. You know, I always want to uh, go away, not, not to stay in New Jersey as much. So finally, you know, I, was, I also went to visit for Copa Division Three, but um, I was going to go to Virginia, California. So I decided, you know what, I want to stay in Jersey. So I went to visit NGCU, talking to uh, Coach Kevin, Kevin Gies at that time, that, talking to other schools, but I never talked to the coach from King. Uh, I know Coach Tony called me at that time. So my priority was, uh, I just don't want to play for school. And I have no clue I was Division Three at that time. But So I started learning about the financial aid, the package, you know, and all that. So I remember uh, I went, uh, Coach Lambert from assistant coach from Clifton called me. He called me like, hey, I'm going to be assistant coach at King. I was like, okay, congratulations. That's good. He was like, I want you to come with me. I said, you know, all right. You know, so I went. Uh, first of all, I didn't even know they was like they do like tryouts. It was like uh, 80 kids there doing tryout, and and my experience at King was great. You know, uh, you know, gave me the opportunity to continue playing, gave me the opportunity to continue working, 
and to be able to help my my, my parents and, and had the opportunity to, to to have the degree over there. So I said a lot of good things because uh, I did what I was supposed to do to finish school. Pat Devaney, live from your car. You, sir, had a very different experience than most because an injury actually um, kind of forced you to change your initial plans. Um, tell us about your experience, where you started, and how you ended uh, your career with the Gothic Knights. Well, my career started uh, in high school. My freshman year, I was lucky enough to play for an amazing coach by the name of Christian Vanis, who runs uh, St. Pat's High School now. And uh, as a freshman, I was ranked um, top 25 in the country as a freshman. And then uh, as a senior, wound up graduating, and I was getting recruited by Ohio State, uh, West Virginia, Wagner, St. Joe's when Phil Martelli was there, um, Seth Greenberg from when he was down at South Florida. Um, I'm not sure if I said Providence, right? So a lot of D1 schools were recruiting me, but um, – I was a D1 basketball player, but I was a Division One, a Division Three student. I wasn't really putting enough time into the books how I should have, and uh, that hampered me athletically and, you know, school-wise. So I had to go to a junior college. I went to a junior college out in Tishomingo, Oklahoma, Murray State, and uh, I was recruited by Mike St. John down over there, and. Um, he wound up leaving in the end of February. He wound up taking another job. I actually came down there in uh, January. So when he left, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. So I wound up transferring back to New Jersey, and I went to Union County Community College. I played a year at uh, UCC. I was recruited by Stockton College at the time. Uh, wound up shattering my elbow that summer before I was going to go to Stockton, and that was my shooting elbow. So uh, once that happened, that big injury, I showed up to campus with a, a arm in a sling. And things didn't go, you know, how I wanted it to do. You know, go at, at Stockton because of the injury. So I wound up receiving a call from an assistant coach from uh, NJCU, Alex Maribel, someone who I played basketball with back in high school. So he called me up and told me to come back home, come play at uh, Jersey City, come to school at Jersey City. Now, at the time, my GPA was around a one point five I believe I came to NJCU and uh, they surrounded me with an amazing support system tutors I had professors that would take time out of their day to give me extra work and do one-on-one -on -one sessions with me I wanted to graduate in NJCU with a with a 3.1 GPA now the basketball you know I wound up playing basketball for coach Mark Brown who I've known since I was probably seven years old. My dad wound up coaching him in the pro league. So I believe everything happens for a reason. And uh, Division Three is just, it's so, um, how can I, it's so personable, Division Three. You know, I went on visits to Ohio State. I went on visits to St. Joe's. I went on visits down to see Seth Greenberg down South Florida. And being at a Division Three campus, it is just so personal. People actually really want to know about you and they care about you. And that's one thing that I've seen at NJCU is just so personable and the help that they want to give you. Wound up graduating from NJCU 2012, wound up getting an assistant coaching job with the women's program 2012 to 2015, and now I'm here 2018 into 2020 going on my third year as the women's basketball coach. So Division Three has been a blessing to me, and I tell kids all the time that doesn't matter where you go. As long as you play, you have a great overall experience and you're surrounded by people who really have your best interests in mind and that really care for you. So Division Three has been truly a blessing for me. And I can imagine if it went the other way and I went Division One and went overseas and played basketball, who knows if I would have been coaching. So, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. And this was the best thing that happened for me in my life. We started this segment with Jeff Jordan, one of our associate directors. We end this segment with a Ramapo road run, run, Roadrunner, our other associate director, Danielle Bean. Tell us about your experience playing in the great north of New Jersey. So my college athletic experience was a little bit different. Um, as a junior and a senior in high school, 
I was so focused on going to a big school. I wanted to go to a temple. Um, I wanted to go to North Carolina and watch the Tar Heels play. I knew I wasn't a D1 player, but I wanted that experience. Um, but as junior year came to an end and senior year started and I got back on the court, um, thinking about never being on a court again started to really sink in with me. So um, I had a couple schools that were looking at me, um, LIU, Brooklyn, DelVal, various places. Um, Rowan was actually, at that point in time, the number two school in the NJAC. And they had been at a few of my games and AAU tournaments. And I really got along with the assistant coach fairly well. Um, so I decided to take a trip down there to see what the situation was. Um, now, my senior year, I met with my guidance counselor. And she basically told me, you don't have a good enough GPA to go to a four-year institution. You should consider going to a community college. And at that point in time, I had like a 3-3. Three, three. So for me, I was like, I don't understand. I feel like this is pretty good. But uh, I went to Middletown High School North, which is a fairly large high school in a fairly large um, county. And a lot of people did very well. So it was a very competitive, um, it was a very competitive high school. But I knew coming from my town, if you don't leave my town, people get very comfortable here and they, they kind of stay here. They build a life here. They don't get to experience things. And for me, um, I never really found my place in Monmouth County. I knew that there was more for me out there. So I was committed to leaving, whether it was for a year, two years, 10 years, forever. I didn't know, but I knew that I needed to, to leave Monmouth County. So community college for me wasn't an option, uh, but I also came from a single parent household. So financially, um, it was definitely a burden. So I needed to figure that out, which is why I was looking at some D2 schools. But what I realized in D2 is that most of the scholarships D2 is giving you makes it equal to what it would cost for you to go to a, a state school and, and be able to play division three. So I figured Rowan was my best option. Um, I went down there, took a look at everything. It was nice um, from a team perspective. They were elite in the NJAC. If I went there, I would have been essentially a part of, of a postseason team every single year from freshman to senior year. I was offered a starting spot, whole nine. Um, but something wasn't sitting right and I couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, so I had spoken to a few of my friends. They were like, you know, take your time, do whatever you got to do. Uh, luckily, one of my best friends who I had played AAU with, um, who was also from Middletown, was going on a recruiting trip to Ramapo. And I knew nothing about that school. Um, they weren't great from an athletic standpoint. But she was like, you know, it's Saturday. Just come with me. I went there, got out of the car, fell in love with the campus immediately. Um, super rustic, super woodsy, um, very nature-esque, which is something that I really enjoyed. Um, I took a walk around campus. I saw the Bradley Center. Um, it's a D1 quality quality arena, um, and I was sold. And for me, I, I had to reason with myself. I don't like losing very well. Uh, I don't do it well either. Um, so I had to mentally sit there and say, you know, I'm either going to walk on to an, an NJAC team that is going to have a postseason and, and probably go to ch conference championships every single season that I'm a part of it, or I'm going to walk onto a team that has to be completely rebuilt. Um, but the feeling at Ramapo was there. It spoke to me in a way that I couldn't make that connection at, at Rowan. Um, so it was, it was pretty much a no brainer. And I realized that I was going to have to learn how to rebuild a program instead of being used to the winning side of, of what I had imagined my collegiate career to be. Uh, so when I went to Ramapo, freshman year was rough. Um, it took a lot to stay committed to that. Um, but it was great from a D3 perspective, especially because I was still able to work. Um, I was able to focus on my classes. I got a job in the, in the athletic department, which I'll get into later about why that was important to me. Uh, but my work study allowed me to, to get a job with my head coach, which was awesome. Um, but from a competitive side, I mean, we did, unlike Pete, we did have 6 a.m.s, um, so that was definitely an adjustment. 6 a.m.s every day, we practiced from 6 to 8. We left, we, our classes started at 8.15, um, and that really, that structure was important. So uh, the D3 experience there was something I didn't, I could have never imagined what it was going to be, but we put a lot of work in freshman year, by sophomore, junior, senior year. Um, I think first time we beat Stockton in 18 years. Um, First time we went to postseason in two decades. First time we swept Montclair ever, I think. Um, so we did a lot of really cool things. No offense, Joe Cullen. Um, but it, it definitely was not the team that won a championship, but it was the team that rebuilt so much of what that program 
um, was in the past. And we definitely left our mark. And although we don't have championship rings, um, I will always feel kind of indebted to, to that institution and that team for kind of rewriting how I thought about winning because we, we really were a winning team in our own right because uh, we relayed the foundation. And for me, that's always been the most important part of, of my impact there. So we're going to transition now from telling us about your athletic path to Division Three to your career path in Division Three, And we'll, we'll hear from a number of our panelists here. Um, who could have done anything with their lives professionally, but they've chosen to work in Division Three athletics. Justin Beaumont, you mentioned you have coached at all three levels. Obviously, NJSU being your alma mater, but what was it about Division Three that made you choose to work at this level? Um, I think someone mentioned earlier, you know, um, there's an ego involved with um, – you know, playing or coaching at the highest level. Everybody, you know, that wants to coach, um, would love to coach at the highest level. Um, the, the, the truth is the opportunity there is far less, you know, you just don't have as many opportunities at that highest level. Um, and, um, so to answer your question, division three volleyball is a sport that involves passion. Um, just like all the sports in division three, these kids are playing because they want to play. Um, at the division one and division two levels, um, you give a kid a scholarship and a lot of times, as soon as they get on campus, that's it. You know, they're done. You gave me a scholarship. I'm here. Now I'm going to do whatever I want. Um, and, and it's, it's an interesting concept and, and I'm not saying that's all student athletes. I definitely don't want to generalize that, but I've coached a good number of, of athletes, um, at the division one and two level that get a scholarship they show up and they think that the work is done. And at the division three level, it's kind of the opposite. Um, these kids are coming because they love the sport and they want to work hard and get better at it. And a lot of them weren't good enough to play division one or two. So they have a chip on their shoulder. Um, and I love that element. So coaching this level for me is, is the definition of my life, you know, a chip on my shoulder. I have a lot to prove. Um, and, and I, and I get to work with some incredible people that are, you know, sitting here with me and, and, and as well as others, um, and I think at the division one and two levels, um, you might walk into an athletic office and not even know, um, uh, who the soccer coach is, uh, or you'll know who they are, but you won't have a personable experience with them. Like Pat said. Um, so that's really cool too. Um, I went to a, a retreat with you guys last summer, uh, when I took the job and it was very eye opening for me, even this today, I'm learning so much about all of you. I, I knew you guys already, but I didn't know some of these things, which is really, really cool. Um, so division three allows for that to happen. You know, it's a little bit more laid back. Jerry Smith, you coached in high school, uh, before becoming collegiate coach. Tell us about your path to, uh, coaching at division three level and why you wanted to coach here. Well, like I said, I knew at a young age, probably about 15 years old, just seeing what my father did to, uh, I wanted to be a coach. So I knew the direction early on and, um, what I, what I like to do is uh, take a look at something that I love to do and I have a passion for for coaching and baseball something that I, I'm good at and uh, coaches there would laugh that that's basically all I'm good at you probably wouldn't want a hammer in my hand or anything like that and then something I could I could help people out with so I knew that was the path I wanted to be on um, coaching in high school really what we're doing now I just came to the realization this is the first time in 36 years I have a spring where baseball is not involved in it because of personally what's going on with the world today. So I really have taken this time to take a step back and, and really view, view the past. But um, again, it's just a passion of mine. And to see kids grow, develop, ha have them contribute and that's what makes it, it special to me. And we're currently trying to get better as a coaching staff. So we go online a lot. We do a lot of Zoom meetings. And one in particular runs every Monday and Thursday. And you'll see anywhere from 500 to 1,000 coaches. And you'll see coaches that do Little League, high school, D1, all the way down to JUCO. Um, and there's good coaches on every level. There's, looking, there's coaches that are looking to get better. So the level really didn't, didn't bother me. I was perfectly content staying at my high school and doing what that was doing. But I also like challenges, and I want to try to grow as an individual, just as I expect my players to do. 
And when this opportunity came, I am forever grateful for the opportunity that I was given. I never take it for granted. And just like throughout my career, whether it was high school, my playing experience in college, and now you make friendships that, that last forever. And um, again, it's just some, a, a special experience to, to have this opportunity. Pat Devaney, you obviously were part of the women's basketball staff after you finished your playing career uh, as an assistant. Uh, and now you've had the opportunity to come in and in two years have you know, already transformed this program. What was it for you about coaching at the Division Three level at your alma mater that made this, uh, for you, the right professional career path? This was God's plan. I just felt that this was right. You know, being being asked to be an assistant coach back in 2012 and then taking that and seeing what we were able to do in those three years, I knew that this was the place for me. I knew that we could get the job done. And in all reality, you know, this is home. So there's no place better than home. So I feel like this was my obligation. I feel like this is my responsibility to do because the university has been amazing to me. You know, like I said before, I still have professors who I have cell phone numbers for, who I still contact. till to this day, they talk to me. So I owe it to, you know, Jersey City. I owe it to Hudson County. I owe it to New Jersey. I owe it to NJCU. I owe it to the professors. Student athletes deserve to get the best because I was given the best. So I just want to pay it forward. And that's what it's all about, you know, paying it forward. Carlo Edra, you coached for four years as uh, in, from 2008 to 2011, had to leave for other professional obligations, and now are back this year in an abbreviated first season. Tell us about you know, why you wanted to continue coaching um, at your alma mater and at the Division Three level. Uh, I, yeah, I, when I was uh, my first stint as a head coach, it was at a part-time capacity. And uh, I was newly married. My wife and I wanted to, you know, go with the dream. Let's, let's get a house. Let's start a family. And I uh, wasn't going to do that on a part-time basis. So uh, I became a safety professional. I worked for a couple companies. Um, and I guess it just came to a point where I was happy. I was comfortable. But there was something missing. And it was something my wife told me she always noticed about me. Uh, I don't know if that everybody knows this, but uh, Coach Justin actually is uh, the owner of a professional volleyball team and uh, decided one day the team needed a coach. And I don't know why there were so many other guys out there, more guys or girls out there more qualified to do it. But he saw something in me as to why he, he chose me to do it. And I guess it was through that journey where uh, we would be competing over the weekend. So, you know, I'd be working full-time during the weekdays and I'd have to sacrifice some family time and uh, spend it with, with that team. And it was then where I realized I'm like, I, I can't be working for somebody else. And I need to work for, I need to do something for a living that would fulfill me internally. And it was then I realized I, I got to figure out a way to, uh, to make coaching my life. And uh, it start, once I started building my resume with uh, Team Freedom, I uh, started getting some interviews, and luckily, I got a, a tip that NJCU was looking for a uh, a full time head coach, and it it's insane. I can't believe how timing worked out. And uh, what was crazy was I would have actually been in Europe when I got that phone call, but for some reason that trip got canceled. Uh, if I had gone on that trip, this probably would have never happened. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is really, it really is a, a, a dream come true for me. Cause I've, I've worked in, in corporate life. I've worked in the blue collar life and I honestly wake up every morning excited. And, uh, sometimes I pinch myself cause I can't believe this is a reality. We're going to finish up with the coaches in this part of the segment and move to soccer and, and golf. Um, Joe, yeah, we'll start with you. I had to say which Joe because we have two Joes on the call. Um, you know, you've played golf, you played basketball collegiately. Why'd you want to coach golf and why the Division Three level um, made sense for you professionally? 
Yeah, so I mean, I guess starting off, uh, similar to Coach Smith, uh, my dad was a was a longtime uh, high school coach. So probably as soon as I could start walking, I was in a in a gym with him, probably at the age of one. Um, so I was always around it. Um, academics was always important to me too. Both my parents were educators. Um, so, you know, in the household academics always came first. Um, so meshing those two things, once I got to high school, you know, being around my dad all the time, coaching, um, just always thought it was something I wanted to do. So, um, you know, being, you know, a division three athlete, I've always uh, worked at division three institutions. Um, and, you know, lastly at NJCU or currently, um, so, um, had the opportunity to coach basketball and golf, um, right out of college and enjoyed both. Um, but I had the opportunity and, you know, to come up to New Jersey um, after being in Maryland for a few years um, and was able to um, meet some people, uh, worked at Drew uh, University before NJCU. Uh, they started a golf program. So I was in the implement, implementation stage of that, um, starting both the men's and the women's golf program. Um, and then knew some people at NJCU and fortunately it worked out. Um, I was able to come um, over two years ago and then really enjoy my time here and, uh, Really excited to start the uh, the women's program this fall. Um, I think we have a lot of exciting things going on here at NJCU, and being a part of it um, is something I'm looking forward to for many years to come. But definitely, um, definitely was ingrained, you know, early on from both my parents um, as educators, and uh, growing up in a small town, Division Three uh, school, Gettysburg College, I was around that as well. So just being around uh, those type of atmospheres from the get go was uh, something that I always saw myself doing. So. Here I am. Soccer, Anthony, you were obviously part of uh, the program at Kane and had a lot of individual success. Coached at the club level as well. Um, you coached a little bit in Division One, but why NJC? Why Division Three? Why is this the right fit for you professionally and something that you'd like to do, love to do? Well, it's uh, you know, after I finished down playing, I like I think I was like thirty years old. 29 or so, I knew I was going to be a coach uh, because when I was uh, away, I uh, had the chance to do a uh, preseason in Albania, Colombia, Peru. So on that time when I came back, I was like, you know what, I, I want to do what I, what I play and what I learned for the other coaches over there to bring it here to New Jersey. But I never thought I was going to go to the college level yet. So I was coaching uh, academies, uh, high-level academies, uh, coaching U12, boys and girls. So... They uh, coach back. It's not on that time. Give me from Mercer also give me the chance to come for to NGCU on the men's side uh, as assistant coach. And I was like, I start to taste it. I like it, you know. So the thing that I like was the the, the, the environment, the the, the the group. You know, they try to help each other. So I decided, you know what? Maybe in the future I can be able to be a coach. Uh, so I was there for two years. Um, went to a Division One as a volunteer. And trust me, it's like something totally, totally uh, different. And again, you know, they gave me the chance to be on the women's side at that time. And I was a little, you know, scared because, you know, you, it's, it's a different um, transition. So I got the opportunity to coach the, on the NGCU women's side. And so far, you know, you know, it's been great. The good thing I like is that we, you know, not only myself, everybody here, uh, we care about the students. And we want to make sure that they finish school, they be able to succeed in life. So, and again, you know, this is like a, like a family, what we do to the, to the other athletic students, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's great. And that's what I, I and continue to, to work with those kids. Joe, same, uh, Joe Cullen, same question for you, obviously playing in Division Three now coaching at the same level um, at a rival, a big rival of the Montclair State Redhawks. Well, my experience was almost the opposite of Coach Jerry Smith and Joe Yek, where they knew that this was a path they were going to go, going to go down. Coaching was never something that I really saw myself doing, uh, maybe just because I loved playing so much. I couldn't bear the thought of actually coaching. It just, I don't know, it didn't sit so well. But through my experience at Montclair and coaching club soccer and high school soccer and at other universities as a graduate assistant and the things I've done over the last six, seven, eight years prior to NJCU really showed me that this is the path that I should be on. This is what I really want to be doing with my life and my career. But um, 
ultimately the the experience I was shown and given and, and had the opportunity at Montclair really um, is what pushed me to want to do do this as a career. Um, those are some of the best days of my life. And if I didn't have that experience, I don't know that I would have wanted to do what I'm doing right now. And right now I'm just looking to try to emulate my experience that I was given and provide that for our student athletes here at NJCU. Have you spoken to the coaches or most of the coaches during this part of the segment? I do want to now move a little bit in this segment to division threes, um, both the leadership, the academic and the community outreach. Jeff Jordan, you sir have done so much with your life. You've been CEOs of companies. You've run the Good Works Foundation. Um, talk about just the Division Three um, level and what Division Three stands for, and why professionally you returning to NJCU in this Associate Director for Internal uh, role was just the right thing for you in your life and your career. Yeah, one of the things that I think um, some people touched on without actually saying it is um, Division One is a lot like a business. Um, Division Three is a little bit of it's a different experience. Um, looking at it, I've always said to myself, the teams that I played on it, in Division Three with, with Jersey City, we had all Division One players. It just didn't work out in some of those other spots. But coming into this environment is, you know, I, I got my, my father figure out of it and my coach Brown and, you know, my mentor, and my, my North star on, uh, you know, a model on how to be a man and things of that nature. So division three has always been a family for me. You mentioned that I have, you know, some diverse experience. I've even, you know, contributed to the university back when I believe nobody on this, n no, nobody was here, uh, you know, at the time, I think, you know, two, 2007, 2008. So, except for Ira Thor. Um, so to answer your question is, I think that uh, my journey, where, where I was, I, I was a CEO of a, a major youth development facility, sports facility, and I got cancer out of the blue. And, um, you know, I, in my surgery and everything, the, some of the support and love that, that I got was immediately from my teammates and from the new AD. And my recovery period was about a year. And it just seems like everything worked towards um, that opportunity of once when I was healthy, things had shifted, things had moved, and there was opportunities and openings that made a tremendous amount of sense. So for me, it was coming back home. It, it, was, it was coming home and, and looking at all these things and all the beautiful things that Danielle and Pete had built on the academic side with RKI. Um, young coaches like Pat Devaney, who I've known since, you know, uh, from the basketball family over the years. And it was just time for me to come back. And, you know, I, I felt like everything that I had done in the past for the past 25 years led me to this situation where I was the perfect fit for this role and coming here. And if it was an offer from another D3 school or Division One school, I would not have been interested because I do, I still do other things in the world and um, I chose this uh, position because it chose me. So Division Three in Jersey City, uh, NJCU is home for me. Devoni Brown, in your new role, uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of community outreach, which is something that's so special at the Division Three level. What is it about that aspect of your uh, new role that, that you really enjoy? Uh, so for me, I, I have a personal connection with that because that's really what uh, gave me the opportunity to really diversify my life. Um, a lot of the community outreach that I do, what that I did as a college athlete, um, really opened my eyes to uh, it being bigger than sports. Um, so that gave me the opportunity to be in the position that I am right now. And uh, when I first started college, I had no idea what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go with my life. And uh, once I started to give back and be a part of that and really grow and experience things. I got to travel with the university and, and go to Baltimore and go to Nashville. And all of those opportunities really shaped my mindset to be able to share my experience with other uh, athletes in D3 and uh, show them that, you know, there's much more to life than what we were used to, especially from the environment that I grew up in. And uh, for me, you know, being able to do much more than just play soccer, 
uh, was the important part. And uh, for me, I wanted to, you know, share that experience with other college athletes and give them the opportunity to give back and see what they can do and how many kids they can inspire um, as college athletes. And that was my main goal. So when we do these community outreach programs and we go to a Halloween event and, you know, we see these kids having a great time and they're hanging out with us and playing, you know, sports with us and wanting to ask questions and be interested in, you know, going to college. That's really what it's all about for me because uh, from our environment, we're not expected to go to college. So being able to inspire and give kids that opportunity um, is really what drives me to do what I do every day. One of the three mantras, the three Ds of Division Three, is develop. Danielle Beam, the Rising Night Institute, really takes ownership of that word, develop. Um, and obviously in March 2020, we just announced that RKI and NJC Athletics won the NCAA's uh, diversity initiative grant. So congratulations for that. And tell us how RKI kind of, and your ability to lead that program with Pete, um, kind of defines that develop mantra of Division Three. Well, I mean, I think it goes back to a lot of things that, that, that have been said by um, our colleagues here. Um, RKI has been molded around the experiences of every person that has spoken today and every person that has gone through um, a Division Three experience. Um, I think for me personally at Ramapo, um, you know, Ramapo gave me an opportunity to see how an athletic department <laughs> ran, but um, it was really getting involved with SAC and community service and, you know, doing work with the battered women's shelter and special needs students that opened my eyes to how important that, that other tier of, of Division Three um, really molds an individual. Um, so I think with RKI, we kind of all got into the room and talked about the fact that, you know, sports is the umbrella, but what happens underneath the umbrella is what really is the magic of Division Three, and how can we enhance that growth and that those foundations. Um, I mean, I was a first generation student. I came from a low income household, uh, but I had emotional support. Uh, my mom didn't go to college. She raised four kids by herself. She wanted to help me in any way possible, but didn't have the, the necessary understanding of what that meant. So in writing the curriculum for RKI, that was always something that was really important to me to emphasize, uh, making sure that students had kind of what my family was able to provide me, but um, they might not have from, from an education perspective of, or a family support perspective. So RKI kind of is that overarching, essentially support figure that provides academic support, it provides emotional support, it provides physical support, um, it provides everything that um, essentially we have identified as a gap for our typical first generation, uh, low income, diverse student population that we serve at NJCU. Uh, and, and our goal and our purpose in that is to create that family experience because not everyone is as fortunate as some of us were to have uh, um, that, that back support uh, that you need to be successful. And our hope and our, our goal is that RKI provides that and the students who are on the cusp, they're right there. They want to uh, be great. They just always don't know how. And, and playing a sport is amazing. And playing a sport gives you structure and responsibility and holds you accountable. But sometimes that's not enough to get you to a place where you're able to fully develop yourself to be the best person you can be. Uh, and I think that development and that support comes from, truthfully, communication and having the right people um, in your ear. And essentially what we try to do with RKI is put the right people in our student athletes' ears to give them that information, that knowledge, those avenues. Uh, and I think, especially for me, I mean, you could see we have an extreme diversity in the athletic department, but from a gender perspective, I'm the only female in, in this conversation right now. Um, so for me, another huge part of our KI is providing that lift for, for our female student athletes. Um, our mantra within, within athletics is lift as you rise um, from a female empowerment standpoint. So for me, it's really getting uh, the right voices, but also gender equitable voices, because um, any statistics that you look at, athletics is typically a male dominated uh, business. And it's always been extremely important to me to make my voice heard, um, not just because I am a female, but I think that it is important to have a variety of voices, a variety of mentalities um, present 
And for a lot of different reasons that we won't get into now, females typically drop off on a coaching perspective um, from making that their job and, and or an administrative perspective. But my personal goal is to just open as many um, of our female student athletes eyes into the opportunity that working in D3 can provide because it is such a family and it's such a strong support system. And uh, student athletes, especially females, need to see other people who look like them and resemble them and can speak to them and that their experiences um, as mentors and role models. So I think um, with working with Pete and really identifying all of those gaps, that's, that's why RKI is so important, um, but it very much is shaped after our cohort and what, what we have seen their deficiencies to be and trying to figure out any way possible to, to make them the best student athletes, but really the best people that they can be when they leave NJCU. Last question in this part of the segment, Pete Vincent, you've been so involved with the academic portion of the student athlete experience. Uh, why is academics just so paramount at the division three level? I'm not saying that it's not at D1 or D2, but what is it about the division three level that kind of allows the student athlete to truly embody the word student in student athlete? Well, I mean, it goes back to those old commercials we used to watch where, you know, for Division three athletes, you know, it's like they're going to go pro in something other than sports. So I think it's so important that, you know, their focus is primary on their academics because, you know, unlike Division one, Division two sports, uh, the likelihood of them, you know, playing this any further than these four years is, is very low. Um, I mean, for me personally, you know, coming from a place where I was a high school teacher, um, you know, five years before coming to NJCU, just really seeing um, the need for that and, and how important academics was, um, you know, because a lot of times, you know, we're from the inner city, a lot of us here. So we know that, you know, sometimes a lot of kids just get kind of pushed through the systems. And, and, and Danielle and I know firsthand that a lot of our kids come to NJCU um, and they're really deficient uh, in, in the, just the basic things, uh, writing essays. And, you know, we have a lot of our, our students at NJC who are taking remedial math courses. So, you know, for us to put uh, an emphasis on academics and, and place it very high on the priority list uh, within our department, um, it, it's very valuable. I mean, it, it's just, it just it creates that holistic student athlete that Danielle's talking about. Um, because when our, when our student athletes are done here and their time has passed and they, and they go on to the professional world, we, you know, we want to make sure they're ready. Um, we want to make sure that they're not at a disadvantage that maybe they were at, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12th grade. We want to make sure that, you know, they're, they're ahead of the curve in, in, in any, in any area that we can put them ahead of the pack. We want to be able to do that for them. Uh, so, you know, as much as it's about, you know, the content knowledge they're receiving in their major and the, and the general education experience they're receiving, you know, we want to make sure that we give them, you know, those life skill trainings and, and things that JJ's doing, you know, is also just so amazing. And, you know, we, Danielle and I really want to loop you in more and more as, as these semesters pass um, because it, it's really so valuable. I mean, a lot of the things I use day, day to day in my, in my job, you know, some of them have come from what I've learned in college, but a lot of them have come from like just life experiences I have and interactions I've had with uh, other professionals, um, whether it be, you know, networking or in a, in a previous career. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm all of my biggest thing is like whatever information I get, I just want to share it with others. Um, I always want to be like that channel and be that go between where like I, I obtain information, I give it to someone else because, you know, being a kid coming from this uh, environment, uh, I know how important it is for them to, to know things and just be, you know, have their eyes open to what's out there because a lot of times they just think that this is their world and, you know, this is the life and there's nothing really much out there. Yeah, Pete, if, if I can just jump in, I, I just want to, I know this is a round table, but this is the first time that, that we're commenting off of each other. But number one, that the, the, the award, the recognition from the NCA that I just mentioned, that's huge. And I'm so proud of what, you know, is, is happening with the student athletes and how that has been built. Because when I, when I was on campus uh, prior to, to uh, anything being created, 
the life skills seminars that I talked about. I honestly left campus twice a week and I said to myself, oh man, some of my fourth graders are better prepared than some of the students that I encounter on campus from a life skills perspective. So to see that commitment that uh, you and Danielle and, and everybody has taken and, and, and built from that is so important because that pulse needed to be there. You know, it, it, it wasn't. And what, what is being built and, built and, and being addressed is so important um, and really what makes us special because we are, right, 99.5 or 99.7, they're turning pro into something else. So they need those life skills to navigate these other professional areas. So kudos to, to you and Danielle for sure. Well said, JJ. Last part of our segment, and this is kind of our elevator speech part of, of our uh, program today, where in about a minute or less, we're going to ask each of our panelists why they would recommend Vision 3 as an option for someone to continue their athletic journey. Danielle, we'll start with you. So from a D3 perspective, um, you will be able to receive the support you need. You will be able to receive the flexibility that you need to potentially work, get involved in other um, areas on campus. And the reality of it is, is that D1 is, is a great idea and it's a great opportunity for people who are committing to that lifestyle. But um, the Division Three experience truly is a holistic experience. And that's something that is so integral to the development of a person. Um, and the ability to be a part of a family and not a business, I think essentially is the reason why every single one of us are here right now, because what we experience um, in our, our Division Three journey has led us to have such a strong anchor to the power of Division Three and what it can do for somebody. And that is why we have devoted our, our lives and, and our careers. But, but really, I don't think any of us see this as a career. I think all of us see it as a lifestyle. And the fact that it is a lifestyle speaks volumes to how much of an influence the Division Three model has had on us. Nick Cesare, same question. What would you tell to a uh, student athlete? Why would you recommend Division Three as an option for them to continue their athletic journey? So I think that um, in, in the, the conference that we play in, um, the actual uh, athletic component of of being a part of a, a program is not much different we are in most of our sports we are very competitive um meaning that the best teams in the conference are the best teams uh, around the country and competing for um championships um so let's face it whether right or wrong most student athletes that are picking a college are picking it for the sport they play or the team they're going to play for and things like that. And they don't necessarily think about um, the rest of it as much as they probably should. And, and the rest as much as we do. So how can we provide them with the rest of that? Right. How can they, they choose our program because of the people that we have in place from um, administrators down to coaches, down to our, our players, right? We, we all talk about trying to recruit the right player and the right fit, not just, the best talented player, the most talented player. So um, for us, we're able to take care of all that. Um, we don't, you know, we spend 20 to 30 minutes during a, our day going over leadership or, um, you know, things like that where we're trying to develop uh, a more well-rounded person, not just hey, we need you to be a good baseball player, soccer player, basketball player. We want you to be that, but also, you know, be capable of getting the job that you want and the career that you want when you're done. And how can you do that? And we have to develop more things than just um, athletic ability. And we are fortunate enough in our situation that we are able to do that with all the things we do with RKI and our teams and study halls and, and all of it just encompasses everything, not just – the sport that they're playing. Justin Beaumont, your, your sales pitch. How do you tell uh, athletes you're looking at that Division three is a level that they need to be considering? Uh, really simple, and it's a bunch of things that we've already mentioned here today. Um, financially, opportunity, um, and big fish 
in, in, in a small pond concept. So you're going to save money. You play division three sports most of the time, unless you're getting a full scholarship to play division one or two. Um, Which is rare. And that's what people don't realize. I think a lot of the time is that that full scholarship you're chasing very, very, very minute. If you're getting a scholarship yeah. at the division one level, it's primarily a partial athletic scholarship. So you'll Correct. end up financially in a better spot most times at the division three level. Yeah, and Danielle actually mentioned it earlier. You could get a scholarship to play Division One or Two, and still owe more money than if you got no scholarship to go to a Division Three public school in a lot of situations. Which is something that I didn't know coming out of high school. Like Pete mentioned, um, knowledge is power, and I wish I had somebody telling me those things because um, I'd have a lot less student loan debt. Uh, but so financially, it's it's a better decision in a lot of situations. If you're a multi-sport athlete, which a couple of our coaches have mentioned they were, you have a better opportunity of playing at the Division three level than you do at any other division. In fact, I don't know a Division one school that allows athletes to do two sports on a scholarship um, in, in our area. And, th and then the last one is, uh, do you want to be a big fish in a small pond, small pond or, or, you know, um, a little fish in a huge pond? Um, if, if you're a Division one talent, like JJ mentioned earlier, that's great, but uh, you'll just be one of many uh, at that level and you can come to this level, be an all American, be recognized and then possibly use this uh, on your resume. So those three th factors are my pitch for my recruits. And I think that's exactly why you should play division three sports. Joe Yak, what do you tell a prospective golfer male or female about why they should be con uh, considering division three to compete? I mean, we, we all want to, we're all super competitive. We all want to win. Um, but at the end of the day, we all understand that Division Three is much bigger than just the sports side of it. So, um, you know, like I said before, always worked at Division Three institutions, played at a Division Three school. Um, it allows our kids to have an opportunity to have that holistic approach. So I emphasize to our kids, you have an opportunity to have a part-time job, uh, have multiple internships. I encourage them to study abroad if they, if they can, um, you know, have close connections with alumni. So the opportunity to you know, to do all those things um, and have that full experience, I think is much easier at the Division III uh, level. Joe Cullen, same question for you. What do you tell a prospective student athlete why this is the level that's right for them? Uh, my two cents on this would be that college sports are special. Uh, they're special here at the Division III level, uh, at Division II, Division I. Uh, they're special if you find the correct fit. And everyone here who played and now coaches and is part of it can attest to that. Um, and it's special only when you find the right fit. Uh, so my advice, my two cents would, to, would be to block out the noise, um, find your own path, find good advice, um, and don't get wrapped up in all the politics and other people's optics of what you need to be doing. Uh, you're going to find a good fit at whatever level you need to find. and. Uh, Division three sports and Division three athletics certainly can be that home for you. Um, so find the right spot academically, athletically, financially, uh, and really just sink yourself into it because um, you don't need to chase other people's opinions and paths. Uh, there's good opportunities everywhere, and Division three, Division one, Division two, they all could be that, but we all can attest to that Division three certainly can be that home for you. Carlo Adra, again, same question for you. Um, my pitch, especially for men's volleyball, is Division One. You have twenty, about twenty men's programs. Division Two, same number, but Division Three men's volleyball programs there are over a hundred. So if you go play those higher levels, you're gonna be playing the same people every season. If you go play D three, you're gonna be looking at a whole bunch of different competition. And uh, the NCAA tournament for D3 16 teams, Division One, it's only six. So the experience is way different to play at the D3 level. And if we want to go into the more personal aspect of it, you go play D1, D2. It's kind of more like a uh, a business approach to it because you're you're getting your school paid for to play for them. But if you play D3, it's all about your pride, your passion, because you're not getting athletic scholarships here. You're doing it because you love to play the sport. Gary Smith, what is your message? 
I think uh, Coach Colin really hit it on the head. Um, for all my recruits, I've never once mentioned a division. Um, I think that was irrelevant. And I also don't um, mention any other schools. I just know what we have here is something that's really special. So, and since we have such a special institution and it just so happens to be division three, that's what, that's what I try to sell. Um, the support here, the high warmth, um, the high standards, all of that is what I would want in selecting my college. And again, that's what I try to preach to, to our recruits as well. It's, it's about building relationships. It's about academics. It's about athletics. It's about the social aspect of it, the financial aspect of it. When you go down that checklist, I mean, I mean we offer a lot. Recently, our team just got a 3.28 uh, GPA, and that doesn't happen without the support. And I know you get support on all, on all levels, but um, again, I know what we have, and I really feel like what we have is something special, so that's what I'm gonna focus on. And, and that's what we pre preach. Anthony Tuesta, what do you tell the young women you'd like to be part of your women's soccer program about why Division Three is the right fit for them? Well, I think like everyone's saying, uh, you know, we, uh, we will give you the opportunity to play the sport that you love and to continue your studies, you know. Um, and again, you know, we're here for, for the athletic students to support as much as we can. And that's something like we create like a family. Thank you. Devani, you're obviously in a unique spot where you're um, now more on the administrative side, even though you do help out with the women, uh, with the uh, men's soccer program. So kind of being in that more role, what would your message be to somebody who'd like to follow in your footsteps to be a player and then maybe uh, have a career in athletics? I think if I played in any other division, I would have never had the opportunity to be where I am today. I think that's the uniqueness about Division Three because the odds of you know a high school kid making it pro are very slim, and we all know that. And uh, nonetheless, it doesn't mean that we don't appreciate the sport that we play and that we don't have pride when it comes to this sport. So I think that it's important for us to understand that, you know, what is the plan after college? What is the plan after you're done playing the sport that you want to play? And I think Division Three is the best opportunity for that. Uh, the relationships that I've developed throughout college in Division Three are something that I would never been able to experience uh, in Division One. I. I know teachers by name. I know individuals that are in the profession that I want to be a part of. And I get, you know, day-to-day -day advice on how to be that. So for me, I think that experience is something that you can't really, you know, have any other place than in Division Three. So uh, that is what I try to sell to individuals that come here is that, you know, the relationships that you're going to develop, the things you're going to learn from these individuals that are in the professional field are things that are priceless. Pat Devaney, you're building something very special with the women's basketball program in a very short period of time. And you can't do that without having the right message to uh, young women who want to be part of something special. What is that message that you say uh, to your incoming players about why this is a special experience? I just sell them on my experiences at the university. I mean, you can't, you can't make things up that really happen to you. So I just tell them exactly where I came from and what I'm actually doing now because of the university, you know, graduating high school with a 1.5 GPA to coming to NJC and graduating with a 3.2 GPA. I think that kind of sells itself, but I also sell the kids on being able to do something that's never been able to been done before at NJCU and that's to win a national championship. But also on top of that is you have people that are in place at Division three level and at NJCU that care, that really truly genuinely care about you as a person and, and care about your life. We have people like me, Sean Tucker, our president, Jason Kroll, yourself. We just have amazing people at our university. So I sell the kids on the people because the people make the experience. And that's one thing that our university specifically, specifically is amazing at, is we have personal people that want to make it a genuine experience for our kids. And that's something that I'm big about. I'm big about on making a genuine experience. And that's what we do. You know, we get kids that come on campus and they're shocked that they're like, wow, they feel the energy. They feel the warmth. They feel how sincere and genuine we are. When you look at Division One, it's a business. You know, you're there for business. 
Vision 3 is not about a business, it's about you as an individual, and it's a holistic approach that we bring to the table. But it's about being the first ever to do something that's never been done before. And that's when a national championship and these girls understand that. But also like Justin was uh, referring to, and I've said this a lot to the recruits that I speak to, is you could be a small fish in a big pond, or you could be a big fish in a small pond. And division three level, that's where we're at. You know, you could be a big fish in a small pond where you could do something that's never been done before. And imagine being an All-American. You know, some high school kids never been an All-American. If they go to Division One, they'll probably just be a regular role player. But if you come to a Division Three program, you could be an All-American. And you could go overseas and play professionally because with a lot of coaches in, in my profession understand, there's so many levels professionally where you could get paid from. So we, we tell kids that, you know, there's, there's, still, there's still opportunities for you to play pro. So we just tell the kids the truth and we genuinely care about them and, you know, it shows. Thanks, Pat. Hey, Ira, can, can, can I jump in a second? Um, that, that little blue thing, I'm raising my hands. You right raise your hand, but we, we, yeah. we were going to go home with you. We were going to let you have the last word, but I wanted to – then, then you know what? I'll, I'll wait because I want to support these coaches right here. So Absolutely. Yeah. Pete Vincent, academically, Division Three. why is this such a special level? Um, you know, I, I think that – a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of Division One athletes that I know, um, they, you know, it, it was very difficult for them to uh, manage, um, you know, uh, that that um, demand with the sport and and their academics, and a lot of them, you know, had to go to, you know, school in the summertime to to, to obtain credits, and you know, maybe they completed their um, their careers uh, playing wise and, and then had to, you know, maybe stay in school a year or two more, or, you know, I, and I think, you know, just at the division three level, it affords you the opportunity to, to have more flexibility in your schedule uh, so that, you know, you're, you're not um, grad, grad, like Van Wilder type of type of student athlete that you're in school for so long. Um, and I, and I think Danielle and I have done a really good job the last couple of years of making sure that our students are, you know, uh, doing that 15 to finish program and, and, and you know, getting our students um, out into the real world as, and as soon as we possibly can and, and the most prepared. And I just also want to touch on something Justin said for like a couple of seconds. Justin and Pat both said this, that, you know, the big fish in the small pond thing. Um, you know, it's really true. And I, and I feel like at the Division three level, our athletes, you know, all get treated equally, you know, in, in, from a, a resource uh, perspective. And, you know, we're all in and we're all, you know, treating them just like they were Zion, you know, sometimes at a school like Duke, you know, Zion Williamson is Zion Williamson and everyone else is who they are. And, you know, um, Cole Anthony is Cole Anthony. And, and then you got all these other guys. But I feel like every one of our student athletes, we look at the same. Um, they bring the same amount of uh, energy and effort to, to the programs. And um, I don't think you see that in any, many other places other than Division Three. All right, we are going to wrap up today with Jeffrey L. Jordan. Take us home. Yeah, I know you had some thoughts. Uh, you want to support our coaches, but um, also give us some final thoughts on why Division Three is a special level. Uh, uh, one of the things that I've noticed uh, since being on staff is what a difficult job um, – our coaches have in recruiting for, for a number of reasons, but I'm actually going to look in the mirror and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it really real that this generation of student athletes think that they're better than they are. So they're going to fate. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to chase their dreams and I'm all for dream chasing trait, chase those dreams. I, I did it. I chased my dream. And by the grace of God and a higher power, I landed in Jersey City. But what we need to do is everything that we said on this call about our holistic approach, what we do to support them, um, not mentioning others. I think what we do is, is, is we do a great job of letting them know that if they come on campus, if they, if they come on campus directly or they come from an alternate route or, or, or something didn't work out and they show up here, we are going to be that, that home, home landing spot, that family. Because of our approach, Pat hit on it best, it's about the people. We want everybody to meet all of us because we have that link to the university, to the city, to the community. 
we believe it, we walk around with it. Um, and that's what the important part is. But a lot of these kids are not are going to be blind to it. They're, they're not going to see it. And it's just our commitment and, and our authenticity and us being genuine about what this university has meant to us and why them selecting us, they are going to get to a higher level after they get out of, uh, after they graduate, right? So we want to prepare them for life, even if they're not going to be playing their sport and tap into everything that makes being a student athlete special. And I think that's what really makes us as a Division Three leader the best. And the NJAC is the most elite conference in Division Three. Put that up against anybody. So we, we have a lot to sell. It's a difficult sell just ba based on the mindset of some student athletes. But as you can tell, the more we stay at it, the more our you know, cohesion as, as leadership continues, we're going to attract those right, right type of, of kids and we're going to be that, that right place for them. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you to our entire panel here as we celebrate 2020 NCAA Division Three week in a rather unique setting here. Uh, the pandemic that we are all dealing with has forced us to now uh, move to a more virtual platform to uh, you know, speak to the NJCU community. And I'd like to thank uh, from left to right here on, on my screen, Justin Beaumont, head women's volleyball coach, Nick Cesare, associate. <laughs> Baseball coach Pete Vincent, who's our assistant director of the Rising Night Institute. Joe Cohen, head men's soccer coach. Jerry Smith, head baseball coach. Jeffrey Jordan, associate director for internal operations. Pat Devaney, out in the wilderness in North Jersey, head women's basketball coach. Anthony Tuessa, head women's soccer coach. Carlo Edra, head men's volleyball coach. Devonnie Brown from our community outreach um, and Comrec and uh, equipment. Joe Yek, who's our head men's women's golf coach, and Danielle Beam, our associate director for leadership development and director of RKI. That will do it for our roundtable this afternoon. We ask you all, please take care of yourselves in this truly unprecedented time. Be safe, and we hope to all see you again soon. Shout out to the first responders. <laughs>